Often during momentum units, we do problems involving things like guns being shot where they recoil or a cannon shooting and recoiling backwards or inelastic collisions where an object embeds itself in another object they move along together. Well, these problems are nice to do and do have some real life value. They're often very hard to demonstrate in class. So what I would like to show you today is how to take two pieces of lab equipment that a lot of um, physics labs have these days, a CPO marble launcher and some Vernier Dynamics carts. And with a couple very easy slight modifications to be able to make a demonstration where you can fire a cannon, see a cannon recoil, see the bullet move, measure those values to within about three or four percent accuracy, and also fire an object into another object, have it embed itself in the object and have those objects move along together. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take apart our marble launcher so we can mount the launcher onto a veneer cart. This is done fairly easily, just unscrew the front bolts. I would keep a cup handy to keep your pieces in so you don't lose them because you don't want to ruin your projectile laps. So. Let's get this out of the way. So now you have a launcher, which we can then mount to the top of this. To mount this, we need to make a couple modifications to our marble launcher. Namely, we have to drill a couple holes in it. Now you could take a ruler out and try to measure where the holes are on these things and then try to transfer that to the marble launcher and hope you get lucky. What I found is a little bit easier, especially if you might be modifying some uh, veneer equipment later, is to make a little template. So just simply cut a piece of transparency to the size, and you can just lay it across the dynamics cart and that measure the size of it. So cut a little piece that's the same size as this groove in, in the dynamics cart. Simply lay the piece of transparency in there and then you can just go along with a marker and mark down some points in the middle of the tracks on the dynamics cart. You then take, um, after the mark, leave it there, take a simple tack and just pop the holes through where you would like to mark. So now we have a template and this one happens to have nine holes in it so if we wanted to mount something to this mount something to this dynamics cart we could use this template to figure out where to put our screw holes so i'm going to simply just take this slide it across my cpo launcher and line it up and make sure that the holes when i drill them that i can actually get to them without taking the barrel off because you could take this off but if you don't need to you might as well keep it on that looks lined up pretty good and then you can simply just take a pen um you could drill four you really only need two but you could drill four if you want, just mark the holes in your marble launcher where you'd like to drill. Put your template back, go over somewhere, do a little drilling, and when you come back, you'll have your marble launcher with four holes drilled in it. Now to attach this, you might want to use the, um, the CPO, so it does come with little screws and clamps like this. The problem is the screws they give you are too big, they're for one too long, or too short in this case and they're also too wide that when you put them through this they actually you can't screw them in because they come into contact with the barrel here so I found if you use four millimeter screws that are about I don't know about that wide about I think it's about 20 25 30 millimeters long that these work very well there's one little problem though is that when you because they're a smaller diameter nut when you put them into the dynamics cart like so, they actually spin. The head is too small and it'll spin. Um, the way to remedy that is just take, cut a little piece of masking tape, painter's tape, and just wrap the head of the screw three or four times. To just make the head a little bit thicker and now when you slide it in, it doesn't turn. So, you can modify two screws that way. Simply slide them into place. Um, actually, I should mount this one of the other cards. This one has a pin on it. Drop your launcher on top. Stick a washer on top of each. 
but not on top. Get it lined up again. For this demonstration, this doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but you might as well get it as straight as you can. And then just tighten these down. And now, so if you just want to demonstrate a cannon being shot with recoil, you can then just load your marble launcher. Set it there. Um, be careful, remember when you shoot these, you don't want to shoot with your hand because your hand might get stuck and might kill some of the travel. So I tend to just use a bar and give it a tap. And you can just fire it. And the marble shoots out one way, the cannon recoils the other way. And again, you could use different speeds, see different recoils, use different marbles, use plastic marbles instead of steel marbles to see different re different recoils. Um, one more little hint, if you were going to use a motion detector to measure the motion of this thing, what I usually do is you can mount a, a photo gate on one end and shoot the marble a bunch of times and see its launch speed. You could then mount a motion detector on the other end that would pick up the speed of this thing recoiling and you could do momentum conservation and see how close you are. If you are going to use a motion detector, I would take something like this, put a little piece of Velcro, this is just a small piece of cardboard about two inches by two inches, put a little piece of Velcro in the middle, put a little piece of Velcro on the end of your launcher, and you stick that there and it gives you a nice big flat surface for the motion detector to um, detect as it's moving. So that's a nice demonstration by itself. We can add to this, we can make a catcher that this thing will fire into to um, demonstrate a completely inelastic collision. Uh, all you need to make a catcher is another dynamics cart. If you happen to have one of these adapter plates, they're nice and helpful for this. If you don't have one, it's no big deal. You can just use tape. So I'm going to put this on one end. Again, these are also nice because it gives you something. If you want to use a second motion detector to detect this cart, it gives you something nice and flat to aim at. So I will... Hook this up near one end. And now for the catcher, all you need is just a simple piece of styrofoam or I use this. This is foam that actually these tracks were packed in. A couple pieces of foam. Take two longer pieces like this. You can then just take a a smaller piece and again if you look at the marble I think a piece is maybe a little bit smaller than the width of the or the diameter of your marble you're shooting stick that at the end like so maybe put a little piece in the bottom to keep it open and then you simply use some masking tape or some duct tape to tape it together when you're done you'll have something that looks like this just two pieces of foam one piece of foam spacer in the back taped together a little spacer in the bottom to keep it apart and then if you have this dynamics thing here, you notice there's a little pin sticking up. You can simply just poke a hole in the bottom of this. Set it right on top of that pin and you have yourself a catcher. Again, make sure the groove you cut into this, it should start off bigger than the marble and then gradually get smaller so that when the marble fires into it, it'll be embedded inside. And again, you may want to add a piece of tape to the back of this just to keep it in place. So, good old piece of masking tape around the back. Make sure it doesn't move. Now again, we have two carts that are stationary. You can load your launch with a marble. Fire into the catcher. Oops. Yeah, don't use a magnet on the end of your you're firing. Fire in the catcher and you have an explosion with recoil and you also have an inelastic collision where an object embeds itself in another object 
And again, these are two nice demos that we usually are difficult to do in a physics class and get good results, but with a couple modifications of, of existing equipment, you can get a really, really nice demo that gives you really nice numbers.